Hi there, this is the Elm Street Fanatic 1428. Gonna be doing a in defense video for <clears throat> Nightmare on Elm Street 5 The Dream Child, which is a 1988, um, 1989 film actually. Um, that was coming off the success of basically the four films that came before um, this film um, Nightmare on Elm Street um, the original left a huge door open for the franchise and um, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 was didn't really um, make much of an impact with with much viewers outside of franchise fans some rare franchise fans um, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 while not a critical success was a very critical success a lot of people love Elm Street 3 and the really the only one that was a major success was the Nightmare on Elm Street 4 the dream master financially speaking and that l led to the creation of a Nightmare on Elm Street 5 the dream child now just like um, the Nightmare on Elm Street films and then the Halloween films have a lot in common actually um, where Halloween 4 the return of Michael Myers um, Opened the doorway for a rushed sequel, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Well, it happened with the Nightmare on Elm films. I love Halloween 5. I think Halloween 5 gets a little bit too much undeserved crap. But, um, speaking about Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, I think is a superior film than, um, Halloween 5. Um, here's why I think Elm Street 5 is better than, um, than that film. Um, and why I think it deserves more credit. Um, first point. The film, a lot of fans tend to complain about, um, Freddy's comedic streak in this film. A lot of people, um, complained about... Freddy being more comedic and less um, serious, but if if you watch part four, if you watch um, if you even if you go back to the original 1984 classic, there's some level of comedy to Freddy. There's always has been some level of comedy, like when um Freddy's having Nancy it with he's right at the front door and he says. Nancy, it has her mother's face. Um, part two is a little bit, is probably the most serious, most darkest out of the entries. Three, three really put the comedic influence on the franchise, and part four is plain comedy. But people don't really have much of a problem with part four's comedy, which. I love part four more than five, but I say part four is a little bit more comedic than um five. Um, as as for um Elm Street five, um, I think that there's a lot there to appreciate if you're a fan of the and I'm an Elm Street franchise. And I'm an Elm Street franchise. You have um. A great, and I repeat, a great way to um, progress progress some um, part four story. I really, I really enjoyed um, the route, the route that this film's um, plot took. It took a very, um, a very pretty clever idea. It was a very clever idea. You basically, you had um, Alice, Alice. Um, Johnson, Alice Johnson, who, um, 
is newly graduated from high school, newly graduated from high school, and, um, it's basically her dealing with, you know, being a youth, being a youth, and, um, accidentally, um, accidentally bringing, um, a child into the world, um, a Jacob, and it's basically about her struggle. It struggles of, you know, dealing with, you know, the loss of Dan, the father figure. Uh, loss of Dan, the father figure of the child. And her dealing with, you know, having a baby at that age. And, um, and that's what leads to this film being more clever than, um, any horror sequel Especially a film in the late 80s where the horror slasher genre is getting a little bit cheesy. Um, this film really broke the mold. Really broke the mold and dealt with some serious topics. That were It was a very ballsy move for them to bring up these serious topics about pro-life and pro-choice. There's some really heavy themes in this film. I really That's one thing I really love about the Elm Street films. Sure, there's some fun ones, like, the, I love them all, but they're sure there's some fun ones that don't really have much of a thematic level to them, but for the most part, a majority of them deal with a, th a thematic level. Um, part one dealt with Nancy defeating Freddy by uh, how you would treat a bully. Um, part two dealt with um, themes of homosexuality. Part Three dealt with themes of suicide. Um, part four is oh, just a plain fun film. Frey's Dead is a plain fun film. Um, New Nightmare is a clever film, but it isn't. It has some themes to it. Um, Forever Jason is just pure fun. And the remake dealt with a little bit more of Frey's child molestation side. So I think that each one offers a. Some of them are more fun, and some of them have a deeper level to them. And I think this one's probably the heaviest, uh, the heaviest one on a thematic level, with, you know, the abortion topic. And, um, that this film brings up. Um, another thing is, I think, this film also has a pretty, um, terrific topic atmosphere, like, you know, the big, um, nursery castle, nursery, um, um, not nursery, but church thing in the beginning, um, the way that looked, you know, the way, um, Freddy and his little dream world near the end when he was again getting into his confrontation with Alice. Um, I also think that this film, you know, has a, just has a terrific visual style. Um, like, I, I like Super Freddy. Super Freddy's very cool. Um, uh, and this film also has a great cast of characters. You got Greta, you got Yvonne, you even got Mark. I love Mark. Mark is a in this film, Mark is one of the best characters. I love Mark as a character. Um, he's just an innocent guy who loves comic books, and his death is pretty creative. Um, there's there's some there's some problems with it because um, my only legitimate problem with it, my only legitimate problem with it is the bon petit bitch, bon petit bitch. Um, Scene where Freddy is, you know, um, killing off Greta. Um, I'm, I'm not a really, I'm not really a big fan of Freddy's makeup in this film. That's my only real problem with the film is that the makeup, the makeup is 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 horrible. Freddy's makeup is pretty bad. But I don't really, I don't have really have much of a problem with it because. It's, it's still suitable and it's still effective. It's still an effective um, makeup job. It's just one of the weaker makeup jobs, if you ask me. 
But um, I really do um, appreciate um, the level, the level of what Fred, of what Robert England did to the role. He was um, in that costume for like uh, days and was in stealing like sugars everywhere for. Uh, when it, it was a, to it was a, it, from my knowledge, this was a really difficult shoot. Shreddy knows best. Um, a really difficult shoot, but, uh, um, I, I don't really understand how any fan could really hate on Nightmare Ultra 5, the dream child. Um, as, as a child myself, as a child myself, actually as a kid myself watching this, this one was one of the ones I remember re-watching a lot and really enjoying. This one was like really a highlight for me. It's my um, third least favorite though. Um, I put it to me. It's, uh, to me, I think it's way better than um. I think it's way better than um. What's wrong with me? You just a little. You know, Nightmare on Elm Three: The Dream Warriors. I, I love the Nightmare on Elm Three: The Dream Warriors. Don't get me wrong, but um. I think this one's a. It should get the credit that my mom wanted to come dream of because this is a pretty excellent one that all my news do. Um, if if you want to watch a clever, like uh, basically, I think in my analogy, if I was one film that I would um recommend recommend to um. To both children and adults, because it has a lot there for for both age demographics. You have you, you have a serious subject matter. You have a serious subject matter there for adults to chew on, for old for older people to chew on, and then you have this like fun comedic stuff on the side. Um, I know all, all in all, really think this film is awesome. I love the opening credit His sequence. The opening credit sequence, the way it's blue filter and stuff, is that's pretty awesome. Um, I love, love, you know, that this film dealt with a return to some plot subject matter that was kind of abandoned in part four, dealing with um, Amanda Kruger, her being the mother figure of Freddy. Um, I like that it's dealt with more of. It brought up that subject matter that was dropped in part when it comes to I also. I also really, really, really. I really think that this is a worthwhile film. I, I love it. I love all nine Nine Reunion films. I think that they all are special, wonderful. And they all. Um, they all do something for me, anyways. For me, anyways. Um, a nightmare on Elm Street Five. Respectable. They don't. They didn't do anything like terrible, like when it comes Friday Thirteen. Always has been terrible. Remember. Halloween has took a few missteps, but for the most part, I respect Halloween. But um. Overall, overall, I think *A Nightmare on Elm Street 5: The Dream Child* is one movie that you could just sit down, sit down, and, um, and watch. Get your coffee, get your coffee, and maybe get some of your family members involved. Drink some coffee, get your family members involved, and watch Nightmare Ultra by the Green Child. I seriously think that this film would, is, has, I would have a lot better for any people. So anyways, this has been my first of four in defense videos. I'm going to be... Next one's gonna be a Freddy Dead, the final nightmare the third installment after this. Then I'm gonna do the one for Nightmare Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, and capping off the Defending series with the remake. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and please stay tuned for more Elm Street related goodness, and that's pretty much it.
think you once again for watching. A nightmare on Elm Street.